Welcome to our Introduction to Christian Doctrine and History module uh, pre-course pre session. Pre session. And this is going to be about sources of theology. My name is David Jeans and I'll be taking you through this. So how do we know in theology? What are our sources? First, I want to ask a question about theology and doctrine. How do you react to these words? What do you think about? How do you, how, what do you feel as soon as the word theology is said? Here are some possible reactions. You might think it's difficult or boring or overcomplicated. Or really, you'd rather be doing something to help others. Or you might be like me and think, oh, that's exciting. How does theology help us? Why should we study theology? First of all, theology helps us to know God better. Secondly, I think it helps us to understand God's purposes better. And the purpose of that is that we might grow in the family likeness. We often say God has a plan for our lives. His primary plan for our lives is that we should be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. But there's another thing that God wants us to understand his purposes better about, and that's to do the family business. And the family business is being the business of blessing other people. That's why we need to know more about God, that we can share him with them. When we're talking about sources of theology, the usual um, approach that Anglicans take is that uh, goes that goes back to Richard Hooker in the 16th century. He said that there are three sources of theology, scripture, tradition and reason. Now, often we think of these things as being equal, uh, a, a well-known image for this is the three-legged stool. The three legs being scripture, tradition and reason, and they all need to have the same importance uh, for the stool to stand up properly. But is that right? Are all sources equal? Are they equal for you or is there one that's more important? What did Hooker actually think? Well, for Hooker, the primary source was scripture. But he said that the importance of tradition and reason was that they were aids for the interpretation and understanding of scripture. Scripture is the primary source, but we need to listen to the Christian tradition and use our reason to interpret and understand scripture. So perhaps this picture might be better. That's not me, by the way. The idea is that the driving wheel of the tricycle is scripture. And the two other wheels, the stabilizing wheels, are tradition and reason. So what is tradition? Well, it certainly includes what the church has said, the creeds that we say on a Sunday. It includes what theologians have written and are still writing. It includes the preaching and teaching of the church, which don't have the authority of scripture, but they help us to understand scripture. Maybe Bible aids like commentaries and Bible reading notes. Again, they don't have the authority of the scripture, but they help us to understand the scripture. But actually, one of the things that we most is, is, uh, is that we get our doctrine from the most is what we sing and what we pray. 
They're not scripture, but we learn a lot of doctrine through them, what we sing and what we pray. And the thing about tradition is that it goes across the world and down the ages. We need to listen to other cultures and their understanding of scripture and of our faith. And we need to take note of those who've gone before us. In another context, Isaac Newton said he knew a lot because he stood on the shoulders of giants. And we need to do that as well. Then what's the place of reason? I think it's in asking the right questions of scripture. For example, what sort of writing is it? Is it poetry? Is it history? Is it teaching? Is it law? What was the original context? To what group of people was it being written and what was their situation? And we need to ask the question, where does it fit in the story of God and God's people? The simplest level, is it Old Testament or New Testament? And was what's been written just for that context? And then the key question is this, I think. If God said that to them in their context, what does the same God say to us in our context? But then there's, there's something else about scripture and theology and their relationship. Are we judging scripture or does scripture judge us? We need to let scripture speak to us, to ask us questions, to challenge us. And a biblical scholar called John Goldinger said this about a key moment in our reading and trying to interpret scripture. And he said that key moment was not the interpreter grasping the meaning of the text. It was the meaning of the text grasping the interpreter. And when that happens, has the text changed us? Do we act on what it says? Because if we read a scripture and don't allow it to change us, and we don't do what we think it's saying, telling us to do, have we really given it any authority? Finally, there's a fourth source uh, added, that's been added over the years to scripture, tradition and reason, and it's the source of experience. Now, that can be individual experience, things that happen in our lives. For some, it's charismatic experience, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Words of prophecy, those sorts of things which don't carry the authority of scripture, but nevertheless are something we may learn from. And then there's the historical and cultural context, which is a sort of collective experience. In our own history, in our own time, in our own culture, things that are going on that are our collective experience are things like climate change, and at the moment the virus and lockdown, how are those challenging the way we think about God? What are we learning from those aspects of our experience? There's a final question for you to think about as you go away from these, these few minutes. How has experience affected how you think about God? For me, one of the most profound experiences of my life was trying to help after the Hillsborough disaster. I was with people as they identified their dead. And I wrestled with the whole question of what was this teaching me about God? And I realised that one of the things the Hillsborough disaster taught, taught me about God. Sorry, I'm looking up. It's because the stadium's just over out, out the window of my study. The Hillsborough disaster experience uh, made me ask the question, where would Jesus be in this? Where was Jesus in this? And it made me realise that if Jesus was alive today, on a Saturday afternoon, he might be in the football stadium with his mates, that those people who suffered and died in that uh, dreadful disaster were ordinary sort of people and Jesus loved to mix with ordinary sort of people. 
So think about how your experience is, how you, has affected how you think about God. So that's all for now, but do think about that. How has your experience affected how you think about God?